everybody. Hi, welcome to Lunch Break with ATI as Frances takes her coat off to be comfortable. <laughs> uh, yes, please do. <laughs> um, be careful of that floor. So, um, hi, Lunch Break with ATI. I'm Cindy Collins. I am one of the co founders of Actors Theatre of Indiana, the resident professional theater company at the Center for the Performing Arts right here in good old Carmel, Indiana, USA. And it is the Wednesday before Thanksgiving, so happy Thanksgiving to everyone before we start. We're getting ready to eat too much and feel completely sick tomorrow. <laughs> but that's what it's all about. And of course, giving thanks. That's the most important thing, and being mm -hmm. together with family and loved ones. Um, today, I'm really, really, I think this is so cool, who the guests are today. Um, it is Francis Russell and Brent Comfort, and they have started a winery here. And, yes. And, and, yes. And they so just rejoicing vine. Yes, here it is, <laughs> right here. And um, they started a winery in Indiana. Not an easy feat, I was saying before we got on the air, and uh, questioning them about how they did this. But you're going to find out all about that. Um, but before they dove into this. Your prof your full time professions, like what you were doing before you even thought of, oh, maybe we should start a winery. <laughs> well, that's a great idea. Um, <laughs> I think we were drinking maybe a little too much <laughs> when we came up with that. That's idea. what spurred the the idea. <laughs> oh, but um, but Francis is a doctor, and, and Brent, you're an engineer. Yes. Yep. And so, um, let me ask you first: How did, like, how did those two professions? How do they? How did they help you? How did they help you do this? How did they coincide with you being owners of a winery now and making wine? You know. Yeah, I think for me the transition was fairly easy. Um, although I was an engineer, I never really did a lot of what people would consider engineering work. Mm -hmm. I was always in product development, which has a mix of technical work, um, marketing work, mm. sales work. Yeah. Um, mm. So. I always wanted to uh, start my own business because <laughs> I was doing so much of this for other, other companies, yeah, for other I people. Um, and so I had a seed in me that, or a fire in me that was just like, you know, start a business. And I never knew what. Mm -hmm. um, and then Francis and I met in Connecticut. They have a big um, wine, wine, trail. wine scene, wine trail, wine culture, mm -hmm. I guess. Yes. Um, and we just have a lot of fond memories, building our own relationship, building relationships with uh, our friends and family uh, at wineries. Mm -hmm. uh, there's something magical about putting a bottle of wine mm -hmm. on a table yeah. um, that just brings people together and builds relationships. Yeah, and, and it's a conversation yeah. too. You talk about the wine, you talk about the taste, you talk about the different wines you're drinking. It's a conversation <laughs> piece as well. Kind of pairs with and things like that. Right, and what to pair it with, mm -hmm. what does it go well with. I mean, it's like, you know, it, good Lord, food. What a conversation, right? So <laughs> what goes with it? You know, what wine goes with this? What? Um, now you were saying, now where are you, tell me where you're, you told me, but tell me where you're located. Tell me exactly where yeah. Yeah. Rejoicing so we Vine live is. live in Carmel, and we've lived here for over a decade. The Rejoicing Vine is in Traders Point mm -hmm. in Indianapolis, mm -hmm. so just north of Eagle Creek. Yeah. So it's fairly easy to get to. It's right yeah. off of 65 and 465. Yeah. yeah. And do you, um, are you now, this, this, I have to come over here now because I had no idea it existed. <laughs> yes. We would love to have oh, you. Oh, my yeah. gosh. <laughs> And so is it like you, you go and you sit, it's like a, it's like a, where, it's yeah. like a winery. Yeah, it is. Um, so we took a old orchid nursery. Um, oh we purchased it. The orchid nursery closed in 2008. Yeah. Um, a building not unsimilar to this. Yeah. Um, we, we had to rehab and renovate and just mm. like you guys have kind of made up the space. Yeah. Um, and we have 16 acres. Um, mm. two of which are planted to grapes, um, and then another acre devoted to other fruits, apples and raspberries. Um, Do you, and using that with the wine? Not yet. Not uh, yet. Fruit, okay. Fruits take a long time to okay. um, grow and be fruitful, if yeah. you will. Um, okay. Grapes take about three to four years before a full, a full harvest. Apples are mm. five. Wow. So you have to be very patient. Yeah. Um, 
But we have the land, we have the fruit, um, and then we have the orchid nursery that we converted to a winery. Mm -hmm. We produce all of our wines there, as well as we have a tasting room mm -hmm. that can seat about 46 oh, people. Wow, that's big. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then an outdoor wow. space when the weather's nice. Well, that's, that, you have to have that. that can I mean, fit about a, you just yeah. have to have it. Yeah. yeah, our patio can fit about 100. Oh, my um, gosh. Yeah. So this land, is everything's together. It's the land right there. It's all together. You're not mm -hmm. traveling to the property and then coming back to the winery. It's everything there yeah that's great yeah. yeah and we are hopeful to put in walking trails running trails because we have about six acres of wooded area there as well so eventually down the line we'd love to have that, that. is such a great idea yeah oh my gosh <laughs> you. you could do like a trail little area you can sit and drink your wine mm -hmm. little pick little areas like walk the trail and then another little area yeah, where exactly. you can take out and have pick people have picnics with your wine oh, and stuff yeah. right like yeah. let's go out on the trail and make a little God, that would be you dope. see our vision. That would be, <laughs> I'm just thinking that would be so fantastic. You're on yeah. the property, and people can come, get their wine, bring whatever else they want, you know, mm -hmm. I guess, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Or, or put a, something together for them, and then they go, and they can have their little time in the woods, yeah. their yeah. different little areas. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's great. One of our missions is to connect people with people, but also connect people with nature. Yeah. Um, so that's where the walking yeah. trails come from. That's where the fruit uh, farm yeah. comes from. Yeah. We really want to teach um, people where their food comes from and why it's important, how it's yeah. grown, yeah. Uh, and where they get it from. Well, that's um, what you're doing. I mean, yeah. you're growers, you know. Yeah. That's that's what your, your product is from the earth. Yeah. You know, really from the earth. Yeah. You know, so. Uh, and you had asked before yeah. about being a doctor. And I think one of the things Brent has always wanted to do is is give back to people and mm -hmm. he kind of saw like through my work I do that on a daily basis yeah. helping patients um, and he always wanted a career where he was able to do that and so we are giving back to the community and we do a lot of charity events there it's nice. um, at the winery we're actually this coming Friday we're doing a photos for food and all of the proceeds are going to the Crooked Creek Food Pantry oh, which is local nice. to the area that's over great. there so that's well, one of our big passions like is to be yeah. able to eventually have produce that we can donate to the food pantries oh, as well because yeah. they don't have a lot of fruit they have a lot of vegetables but not a lot of fruit that, yeah um, yeah I can see that, that yeah. yeah 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 and, and one of our other big passions is um just educating people on like where their food's coming from <laughs> so we're big on in the way our winery or our vineyard is set up which we planted now about what a year two, ago this two will, years yeah, ago two, two years yeah um we're doing regenerative farming i'll let brent explain that <laughs> because he's very passionate about it uh, yeah so regenerative farming is a movement in farming that is all about uh, cultivating life. Um, so if you think about traditional farming, mm -hmm. it's all about uh, how much can you produce, mm -hmm. right, per acre? Yes. How many bushels of corn can mm -hmm. I squeeze out of this yeah. um, acre of, of uh, farm? And regenerative farming takes a look at it more of like how much life can I generate on the farm? Um, I mean, we're still... Because the soil gets tired. Yes, because when you... It, it has to be, re -cult you know, yes, tilled, and it, and it gets... It's actually, you don't no. have to till. When you okay. till, you're actually... Okay. Um, so the way in nature, the way plants get their nutrition is uh, through a bartering system with organisms in the soil. Okay. So there's bacteria in the soil, there's fungi in the soil that all partner with plants okay. and plants are trading their uh, carbohydrates, their sugars that they make from photosynthesis with those organisms for you nutrients. You are an engineer. Yes, body. exactly. <laughs> I'm sorry. Scientist. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're like a scientist. Yeah. It has to be. It is a science. <laughs> it, is. it is a science. It yes. is. Yes. Do, 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 you know, making wine is a science. Making any alcohol is a science, you know, I, I think. And yeah. so yeah. you have to know all that because you're not yeah. just, you're, you're, I mean, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of chemistry. So when you're baking. But just to summarize, you. when you're tilling or when you're spraying pesticides, you're basically you're you're bulldozing the home yeah. of these organisms. And yeah. so then the plants have no way of getting the nutrients. Okay. Except fertilizers. So right. then you have to apply fertilizers so your plants can get the nutrients. Yeah. So the whole idea yeah. with regenerative farming is 
use nature as it was intended. What do you know to, about that? Yeah. Nature. <laughs> nature, yeah. it Usually, turns you out. Know, nature kind of takes care of itself, so. It turns yeah. out after billions of years, nature <laughs> kind of figured out how to, how to feed itself. Yeah. Um, and it doesn't yeah. need humans. Yeah. So regenerative farming is all about working with nature oh, that's to really get the produce great. that you're looking for. Oh so. my God, that is so great. Yeah. I mean, I think it's wonderful. I, yeah. I think that nature does just do its own thing and it's us who have messed that up. You know what I mean? You mess it, you know, na mm -hmm. nature's, it's, it's incredible. It, it fixes itself. It can, it can regenerate itself on its own, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. without, I know. And then I'm sure when you keep adding fertilizer, it gets used to that. It's almost like a drug. It is, you know, yeah. so you're, yeah. you're, it's, it's, it, it's getting used to that fertilizer. So if you you've, don't, you've nailed it. Yeah. The plants don't need to trade their carbohydrates yeah. to the organisms. So they, those organisms don't flourish because yeah. they're not being fed by the plants. Um, and so you, you get on what I call a chemical treadmill yeah. where you have to now apply fertilizer and then you have to apply pesticides because <laughs> the plants aren't healthy enough right. to, uh, fend for themselves. So then. Um, right. you apply pesticides, you kill them, yeah. all the organisms, then you have to apply fertilizer. So it's just this treadmill yeah, that that's, you, yeah. it's, that's it's very difficult to get off of. Rabbit so, hole there. Yeah. So ideally we're using less chemicals in right. our that's great. Uh, vineyard. Yeah. How hard has it been with this? And we were talking about this, the kind of grapes, because you're not on the West coast, you're not on the East coast, you're not in Hampton where they have, you know, I'm from the East coast and the vineyards mm -hmm. in the Hamptons are lovely, you yeah. know, said out in Long, uh, on Long Island. Um, but it's tough, tough. It's got to be a little tougher here. Mm -hmm. So the kind of grapes you were telling me, because we're going to get to the kind of wine that you make. Yeah. 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 You know? So the grapes that we can grow in our climate here in the Midwest tend to be high in acid, low in tannins. And so to make a really tasty or palatable wine, you need to either add a lot of sugar mm -hmm. or you can do sparkling wine. So we've chosen to focus on sparkling wine. Um, that's one of the reasons because we can source locally, which is important to us. We're not going to be sourcing from the coast, as mm -hmm. you describe, mm -hmm. um, but more locally. And you can make a really great tasting wine. So yeah, smart. Yeah. So we have yeah. wines. Um, we have dry wine. So we have a regenerative rosé, which is our driest wine. Okay. Um, it's a brute no... style champagne. Wait, yeah. where is it? Is it's it here? here. Yeah. Yep. Come on, so bring, bring it. A brute yeah. natural. Bring it. Um, oh my God, you have the caps. <laughs> yes, we have crown caps. Oh. Yes. That's for sustainability. It's less waste. Yes. Um, so another big passion of ours is sustainability, obviously with regenerative farming right. that fits in. but. Um, another thing that we can do with sparkling wines is um, when we serve wine out of our tasting room, mm -hmm. it's all almost all of it, eighty percent of it is kegged. So we're using stain oh, okay. We're mm -hmm. using yeah. stainless steel kegs, just like the beer industry, right. serving mm -hmm. out of taps. Every time, um, oh, every time we great. fill a keg, it's seventy-five bottles, bottles, corks, caps, whatever. All the packaging that goes into wine, it's saved from the landfill. Right. Um, over 50% of wine, the carbon footprint of wine is the packaging. Yeah. So we're completely eliminating that. Yeah. All, well, almost yeah. completely yeah. Um, mm -hmm. with kegs. Yeah. So, yeah, 80% um, yeah. of our wines are served out of kegs. Oh um, my gosh. So we're when still you go there, you're like, I want the. I want this. Yeah, so this I is our driest this. wine. <laughs> yes. Um, and yes. give me a glass, right? Yeah. And you're yeah. out the keg, like, yep. a, like exactly. a beer. Like we pour it right okay. out of the tap, just like oh at a beer gosh. at a brewery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but of so. course, you can leave with a bottle. You can I mean, leave with a bottle. We're you know, still trying to figure out that piece. Or as many bottles as you piece. may like. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Try your case. <laughs> yes, if case you will. two. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Five, depending on where you're going and... Who you're going to be with. Yeah, not well, for alone. Thanksgiving, yeah. It's perfect <laughs> yeah. for well, family meal. Well, it's perfect, meal. right? So yeah. what, okay, so tell me. Okay, we have this yeah. one. Yep. Very dry. So that's our driest. Um, that's the dry. And it has yeast in there, so um, it'll be hazy. We believe that's good for gut health. Um, so we leave the yeast in the bottle for that one. Yes, and that one oh is God. made in a traditional champenard type method where you okay. add yeast and sugar to the wine, a still like base yeah. wine yeah. and that creates your bubbles and then we leave the yeast in there so it's almost like a 
pet nat if you've ever had a pet nat type wine. Uh, oh my gosh. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. And then this is our best selling wine. This is our millions of peaches. And we yeah. say it's like biting a fresh peach. Oh my it's, gosh. It's uh, our sweetest wine. <laughs> right. Um, it's our sweetest, but it's still considered an off dry. So it's not, it's not okay. super sweet. It's like right. Semi-sweet. Um, right. Semi-sweet. Yeah. Cause I'm not a sweet. Yeah. And yeah. it's very light body. This is yeah. great. And like, the summertime when it's it sounds hot very out, refreshing. out on the it patio, right. just yeah, yeah you it's could. down too easy. You <laughs> could, well, that's the problem, right? <laughs> but that does. It sounds like a lovely, refreshing summer wine. You yeah, know, it, it is. I mean, this okay. one pairs that, really well with oh, yeah. just about any food too. That one's like. Um, Riesling is a classic wine that yeah. pairs mm -hmm. with yeah. just about every type of food. Yeah, that is similar yeah. to a Riesling that okay. it pairs really well with you know. Uh, spicy food, fatty foods, okay. just pretty much any mm -hmm. food. Okay. Um, what's the other? What's this back here? Um, we have two others. Yeah. Bublicious yeah. is um, a dry wine that we make. Oh, um, I it's, I'm going to it. it. show it's it. Like, oh. Okay. Yeah, we have... It's a little messy. Go. I'm coming over. <laughs> it's all right. There you go. <laughs> it's all right. Um, so in the tasting room, we have five types, five different wines that we serve. Okay. Uh, these are the other two. So this is the newest one, the Berry Gossant, and then we have Bublicious. Yeah. What's the Bublicious? Bublicious mm. is made from it's, the... <laughs> it's, that's my favorite. That's Francis's <laughs> favorite. It's made from the same base wine as the Regen Rosé, uh -huh. um, but we it's more traditional, so it doesn't have the active yeast cultures in the bottle. It's clear, it's crystal clear, it's sparkly. Okay. Um, it is a dry wine, although we do add a little bit of uh, organic sugar back to that just to balance the acids. Okay. It's a little more approachable. Um, the Regen Rosé is very sharp, very acidic, like a, a traditional brute style yeah, champagne. Yeah, yeah, uh, not yeah. everybody likes that. It's not for everybody's palate. It's, yeah. it's really great for a pre-meal uh, aper mm -hmm. aperitif, if okay. I'm saying that yeah, right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this one's more... Um, just really good at any time. It good pairs with food. really well with like cheeses, fatty. Well, foods. it sounds like all this would be great with like a charcuterie board, mm -hmm. you know, and and that's so winery to me. You go yeah. and you have the charcuterie mm -hmm. and you have your different wines and your. I mean, that's just. A, I don't mean stereotypical yeah. at all. <laughs> it is. It's like textbook winery. That's what yeah. you think of. You have of. to yeah. have it. You know, you yeah. have yeah. to exactly. You mm -hmm. must have it. You must have that. You know that 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 good pairing to go with the wine, that mm -hmm. stuff. Yeah. Do, do, when you guys, and you don't have to hold this. I you know, can I just should put it down. Down. <laughs> These are our gift oh, yeah. baskets for, oh, that's for so the nice. holidays. If anybody's that's, that's great. interested, yes. we're selling oh, gift packs. Oh my gosh, um, what a great that's idea. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, gift baskets at the winery. Yeah, yeah. 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 So when you guys first started, it, it couldn't have been, I mean, you were like, we're gonna start a winery. and. <laughs> and, and starting any business, as I know, is very difficult from the ground up. Mm -hmm. I mean, how hard was that for you guys? You know, very hard, and it continues it still to is be hard, hard. Yeah. Yeah. because yeah, it I never have zero business background. Uh, Brent has had a, a prior company, so yeah, yeah. but and Frances uh, works still. She still works full time at right. Eskenazi and the okay. VA. You're at Eskenazi now. Um, okay. Yeah. VA, yeah. Okay. She's an emergency okay. room physician, okay. so her job, her day job, is super stressful as it is. Well, um, that's, why. that's why we <laughs> need. Nice. That's yeah. why we need this. We balance it with yeah. the, the balance. Yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. Although we don't man we don't recommend managing your stress with alcohol. No, my God, no. Definitely not. That's not. I am yeah. not. No. Yeah. Not. Yes. Absolutely not. Yes. No. Then you but, won't get anything done. Yeah. yeah. But it is yeah. difficult. Uh, and we have two two little kids, an eight-year-old and a four-year-old. Mm -hmm. So, um, and then the winery, we consider our uh, baby as well. It's, <laughs> right. it's about as, as yeah, much work as a kid. It's so. a 24-7 job when yeah. you're yeah. starting from the ground mm -hmm. up anything, and it was just the two of you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have other, now you must have employees. We have two employees yeah. there. We consider them family, yeah. although one of them's leaving us for um, the right reasons. She's focused on her career ahead. Oh, so well, we, yeah. But, they uh, both have an art background, which yeah. is great. Oh. So one of them is a student, and it's focusing more of her time on finishing schooling. Yeah. Um, our other employee, Maggie, worked in an art gallery 
in Bloomington. Okay. And so it's great having them because mm. they're in our tasting room, but they also run painting events um, and they're just yeah. both very artistic. And so yeah. at, with the winery, That's cool. it pairs perfectly. Yeah, perfect. So they were just like great employees. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And you have, obviously you have... Um, events there. People can have events there. Mm -hmm. I, I would like mm -hmm. to have a tasting for my I would like to have a corporate party. Mm -hmm. yeah. I would like, you're doing all that, right? And yeah. Yeah. You're, yeah, we're absolutely. doing corporate yeah. events. We do a lot of baby showers, which I, I, I can, I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or wet or even um, showers for, for brides. I mean, yeah. bridal showers, yes, I would think would be pretty popular. Bridal showers, rehearsal dinners. We can, yeah. We've also done some uh, private labeling for companies. Okay. So um, yeah. if a company's looking to do that, we do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. And we're actually going to be at a bridal expo this coming year, which I'm Good. excited about. Yeah. Um, we've done events for up to 150 people, but really with our space and if the weather's nice, you could have more than that there. Especially if it's nice and outside and yeah. Yeah, the patio holds like what, 100 yeah. and something. I mean, yeah. Yeah. look at the fields and... Yeah. yeah. Oh my gosh, exactly. that's really nice. Yeah, and we love yeah. doing charity events, so we usually yeah. waive waive any rental fees for charities. Yeah, that's um, nice. For five hundred one c threes for yeah. not for profits. Yeah. Um, so if there's yeah. any out there listening that well, want to have an event, well, there's one here, Actors yes. Theater of Indiana. Yes, yes. perfect. So we there you have it. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know. I know. When I with, with Actors Theater of Indiana, you know, you're always you're always looking for places to go. And mm -hmm. do an event and have people come and see that place. You know yeah. what I mean. Mm -hmm. yeah. So not only they're supporting you in that in that little little fundraiser you might have, but they're seeing a new venue. Mm -hmm. You know, and they're seeing oh, they're like I've never been here before. We're you know, and yeah. so it's a it's a it's a it's a double hit. You know, yeah, yeah. You yeah. Know, for, for for both um, for both companies that are yeah. kind of combining together. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying you should do that. I don't make the decisions here at ATI anymore, but I would highly suggest it because I think it would be a blast yeah. and yeah. so much fun. Yeah. And um, do you, are you, um, is your wine, are you uh, giving your wines to any restaurant like Trader's Point uh, or, you know, like the restaurant mm -hmm. there, the Loft? We or don't. Yeah. like that. We yeah. love the Loft. We do love the Loft. We don't currently. Yeah, I like that place too. Yeah. <laughs> We don't currently uh, sell our wines anywhere, but in our tasting room okay. um, for carry out or consumption on mm -hmm. site. But um, yeah, yeah. I think in the future we would love to partner yeah. with local businesses. I mean, one step sure. at a time. It's very difficult, and I know people mm -hmm. are like, you know, you talk to people and they're like, "Hey, why don't you do this?" <laughs> Have you guys ever thought of like I'm saying now, right? Like it's yeah. so easy, yeah. you know? Yeah. Why don't you do this? Oh, how about this idea? And ideas are fantastic, yes. but they have to come to fruition, mm -hmm. and that takes a lot of work. So I see yeah. where you're, and you know, it's it's like I I get it. Yeah, I get it. It's mm -hmm. little step, little steps, mm -hmm. step by step by step. We got that done. Okay, yes. you know, yeah. is that exactly. going okay? Mm -hmm. Is that solid? You know, yes. yeah. you're, great. You're spot on. Now we can go yeah. to something else. Well, like, cause, exactly. Yeah. Well, you yeah, know, we're we spot on because we don't want to, I mean, we don't want to pursue a business like restaurants or whatever and then yeah. have the tasting room experience fall off that's, because that's absolutely mm -hmm. true. It because be we're special. not focused, right? Yeah. On, we run on, out of inventory. Yeah, or, yeah. And, or it's not special. Like we're going mm -hmm. there to have the wine. You know, we're going to go yeah. there, we're going to have the full experience of the place mm -hmm. and the wine. It's not going to just be somewhere else where I'm just looking at a menu and I can just yeah. order this yeah. wine, that wine, whatever. Yeah. You know what I mean? And the, I get it. The one mm -hmm. piece we love about the, having people come to the tasting room is like, where else can we sit down and have a conversation with people about sustainability and the importance of regenerative agriculture? Well, that's true. You can tell them you're, yeah, yeah. you have a story. I, I can't you know? do that yeah. easily or I haven't figured out how to do that. Uh, <laughs> no. If they're at the it grocery store, right? <laughs> like... <laughs> You could just walk up to someone. Listen, those apples. I have. You might not want to have. I have those. some friends that would just home run. They would be able to do that, no problem. But uh, not me. Yeah, no. Well, I, first thing, you're both so interesting, and um, I applaud you for for doing this, for starting this company from the ground up with thank two of you, you with a family, mm -hmm. and how hard that is, and being in this region and mm -hmm. doing a winery, and but you you seem to. You seem to got a ha have a handle on 
th those grapes and, and exactly what is right here for this region mm -hmm. and how well those grapes will grow. And you with your all your my God, <laughs> is regenerating and oh my gosh. Yeah. So you when know, I do I my mean, tours, I oh. yeah. <laughs> when I do my tours, I tell people I just I just throw those words out there so you don't ask me any tough questions. I, know. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't even I know. I don't even know what those what words are. You kidding? Are. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't even like know a tough yeah. question without I don't I'm just want like, any okay. tough questions. I don't I want just, any just, tough yeah, ones. Like, so. no. <laughs> no, I think it's fascinating. And and like I said, when I found out who you were and that you were going to be on this because I didn't know if we were going to do one today, the Wednesday before Thanksgiving. And, mm -hmm. and Meg Osborne, the marketing director, said, I said, oh, my gosh, this is really fascinating to me, really interesting. Yeah. Um, so, so you know, congratulations on your success so far. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I wish yeah. you all the best success. I, I hope that it, it just grows and grows and to what you want it to grow to, yeah. you know, to your liking mm -hmm. and, and that, you, you know, your visions uh, happen. You know, and and no, they do come that. to yeah, fruition. You, you know, but no, uh, absolutely. And so Francis Russell and Brent Comfort and mm -hmm. Ellie, their daughter is in the <laughs> room. I didn't mention. She's been great. She didn't mention yeah. her. But she's been really quiet. Yeah. So she's been so good. I shouldn't. Shh. Watch, I shouldn't. I'm not, I'm not off the air yet. But um. But thank you for joining us, and, and best of luck. And happy Thanksgiving, everyone. This was Lunch Break with ATI. I'm Cindy Collins, one of the co-founders of Actors Theater of Indiana. And everybody enjoy yourselves and have a great Thanksgiving. And uh, we'll see you next Wednesday. Toodaloo. <laughs> Bye. Bye.